Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Serpente Sunday for September 11th, 2022. This week, I bring you an educational seminar that I'm calling Snakes Aren't Slimy, But Their Water Might Be. In fact, it probably is, unless you're cleaning it regularly. Let's take a look and find out what I mean. Why don't we start with what slime is? According to Google's English Dictionary, which is provided by Oxford Languages, slime is a moist, soft, slippery substance typically regarded as repulsive. Well, I would pretty much agree with that. This is what slime looks like in the bottom of a snake's water bowl without the water in it. I've emptied the water and I'm taking one for the team here and I'm touching the slime with my finger to show you the difference between the slime and the water container that is beneath the slime. This is not slime. This is important to differentiate. This is urates and feces in a snake's water bowl. So in this case, there's not slime in the water bowl, but the snake has chosen to use the water bowl as a toilet and you still need to clean this. This is also not slime. This is debris. This water dish belongs to one of my West Papuan carpet pythons who likes to swim and spend a lot of time in his water dish. He drags debris into his water dish. His water is actually not slimy, likely because he spends so much time in it that the slime can't take hold. However, there's a lot of debris in it. Just make sure you know the difference between slime, urates and feces, and debris in your snake's water dish. I also checked with the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and they say it's a viscous, glutinous, or gelatinous substance, such as a mucus or mucoid secretion of various animals. Yes, humans secrete slime. We call it mucus. And you know where you secrete it from. I'm not going to go into it. But what about bacteria? Well, bacteria are not animals, but they do share some characteristics with animals. They actually produce a nucleic acid similar to that found in parts of the human pancreas, spleen, and sperm. That's not really what's important for this presentation. I just thought it was interesting. Here's the important part. Bacteria produce a capsule or slime layer on their cell surface, and that is called bioslime or biofilm. Notice it says a slime layer, not a slime blob. So biofilms are slimy layers of microorganisms that stick to wet surfaces, and they may cause up to 80% of infections. Yes, other microorganisms cause infections too, but it's likely that bacteria are causing the majority of them. All right, here's an excerpt from one of the many scientific journal articles that I found about biofilm. I found a surprisingly large number of scientific journal articles on Google Scholar about biofilm. This one I thought was relatively comprehensive. And if you were gonna do a deep dive into slime, I'd probably start with this one. Here's what I found out. Biofilms are structured communities of microorganisms that adhere to surfaces. They're actually an organization of a bunch of living things all working together to form these slimy, sticky layers of film on surfaces that are near water. Biofilms grow on surfaces where water and nutrients are available. That makes sense since I just told you that whole communities of organisms are living there. They need water and they need nutrients to survive. And they like it there and they work cooperatively to make these slimy communities work well for them. They tend to be clusters of cells that bind together by a matrix of self-produced polysaccharides that make them sticky and slimy. So bacteria and other microorganisms, including fungi, archaea, and protozoans, may populate these sticky biofilms, but we're basically today just gonna to talk about the bacteria. But just understand that other things live there too, and these other things may at time cause disease, especially protists. So these organisms in the biofilm get nutrients more readily when they are working together in these communities and when they are protected by this sticky layer of film than they would if they were living alone and they were just free floating bacteria in the environment. These sticky surfaces, this biofilm, keeps them from being washed away and that's important 
It's important for one reason I've already mentioned. It's a lot easier to keep your snake's water bowl clean if they swim in it or spend time in it because these sticky layers of film can't readily accumulate on the sides or the bottom if the snake is, is moving their body and brushing their body against it and if that water is constantly moving around. It's much easier for these things to take hold in still water. This is just another resource that I found that might be more accessible to the general public. It wasn't in Google Scholar. It's a magazine article called What's the Clear Slime Lurking in the Water Bowl? Ever rub your fingers on the inside of your pet's water bowl and you feel a slippery slime of sorts? Well, that's invisible goo called biofilm. This was actually in a dog magazine and I'm gonna link it at the end in case you wanna start here with your further research into pet slime. Biofilm is a collection of organic and inorganic living and dead materials collected on a surface. It is made of many different types of bacteria bound together in a thick substance that acts as a glue to both hold the bacteria together and adhere it to the surface. That's really important because if the bacteria can't be held together, and can adhere to the surface because something's rubbing against it or the water is moving, that's a good thing if you're trying not to build up this biofilm in your other snake's surface. water bowl or other surface. Would you drink this water? It's all right to you, yeah, Under what circumstances would you drink that water? If I was thirsty. If you were thirsty, you would drink that water with yeah. slime in it? Yeah, slime's on the bottom. Why are you asking me? Well, since my husband apparently is drinking slime water, the question popped into my mind, is biofilm always bad? As I've already mentioned, Google Scholar has tons of research into biofilm from way back when to the present. Feel free to peruse that. But here's another very accessible article on biofilms called The Good and the bad. It's from the Water Quality and Health Council. You can find them at waterandhealth.org. Of course, that reference will be at the end with the others. It turns out the biofilms form in virtually every imaginable environment on Earth. They can be harmful or beneficial. Like many things, they're both good and bad. So we're going to take a side ride here and see one example of how biofilms can be beneficial. Here's a side note that I found very interesting. Although water treatment operators fight a constant battle against biofilms, these bacterial communities can also be used to improve water quality. How, I thought? Well, it turns out sand filters use biofilms very beneficially. Raw water trickles through sand grains, bacteria that feed on organic material in the water attached to the grains of sand, setting up these biofilm colonies. And the constant stream of nutrients feeds the biofilms, cleaning the water of the undesired organic matter in it. So biofilm treated water requires less disinfectant. And so this is just one example of how in this case, working in conjunction with sand, biofilm is actually a good thing. Okay, I thought that whole working in cooperation with sand thing was really interesting, but I want you to also keep in mind that bacteria, good bacteria are necessary to keep a healthy gut microbiome for both us and our snakes and other animals. So not all bacteria is bad. There are places though where we don't want these communities of bacteria forming biofilms and that would be food containers because foodborne pathogens like e coli and salmonella can form there if we allow these bioslimes on food surfaces and then also the interior of water systems and water containers they're just smooth surfaces like water bottles like water jugs like your faucet and other water pipes when these biofilms form there, it's called biofouling of the water, and it's just as disgusting as it sounds. So let's talk about where these slimy substances build up other than water pipes and water bowls. Obviously, anywhere where these bacteria come in contact with water, like sinks, yes, water bowls, water pipes, but anything containing water, all or most of the time, and this is gonna include not only water bowls for your snakes and other animals, but water storage containers. Like I mentioned before, we wanna watch this 
in our water bottles and any containers that we might be storing water long term in and that water isn't getting filtered or moved around or changed out. We're also going to find it on rocks and streams and it's the scum that grows on shower curtains and in toilet bowls. Ick. And it also forms dental plaque. Gross. So let's take a look at some clean water here. If you look at this photo on the right, this is my jungle carpet python Vedra and she loves water. She's a huge fan of drinking water and swimming in water. And her water is usually slime free. Even when I clean her water, there's debris in it, but there's usually not slime in it because she literally swims in it almost every night. That's an example of some really fresh looking clean water and Vedra is enjoying a drink. Now let's look at some biofouling. This water in the video that I'm about to show you is disgusting. This is what happens if you never clean your pet's water bowl and you leave it with water in it for days or even weeks. This is some foul water. Very disgusting. And think about this. Not only are we getting the bacterial bio slime, but if you have animals that are drinking out of that, they're leaving bodily mucus in the water as well as taking the water in and that is going to contribute to the biofouling as is any debris from the environment that gets in the water gross so please don't let your pet's water look like that or get to that point and expect them to drink so, it what can we do well we can add fresh water daily that means top off the water bowl or dump it and refill it but not necessarily scrub it. Don't think that I'm being totally disgusting by saying that because as I said, some bacteria is beneficial and it takes these biofilms a little while to form. So we don't need to be removing the snake's water and disturbing them every day to take that out and scrub it. Just adding fresh water every day or if it's not going to be intrusive to the snake, you can just pull that water dish out and dump it and put fresh water in is fine. But about once a week, you want to dump that water and thoroughly scrub and disinfect the bowl. Just normal household cleaners will suffice. I do want to remind you that if that water is not in a convenient location for you to get to it without disturbing your snake, then have a separate drinking water for them that's just near the snake's door so that you can easily get that in and out and keep that drinking water fresh. And then you can clean other water when it's a time that won't be intrusive or disturbing to your snake. I have shown how to do this in many other videos. So if you have a question about it, please let me know. Then you wanna keep the water flowing if possible. So if your snake isn't moving in the water, consider moving the water around, sloshing your own hand in there or setting up some kind of a mechanical system that moves the water. They make a lot of these for cats because cats especially like to drink fresh water. And so there's a lot of these waterfall drinking fountains for cats. If you're keeping that water moving, it's gonna just take these biofilms a lot longer to take hold in the dish. This is just an example of my jungle carpet Python Vedra. These photos on the edges are from when she was much, much younger and had a smaller water dish. And now she has this large water tub that she actually swims in every evening. Every time I clean that, there's not slime in it. When I clean it, it's because she has soiled it by eliminating in it and I'm cleaning urates or feces out of it or because she's just drugged so much debris in it from her branches and her substrate that it's time to clean it. And surprisingly, when I'm cleaning it, it's not slimy. That's just because she is moving her body along those surfaces. She's swimming in it. So not only is she rubbing along the surfaces with her body but she's keeping that water moving every night and it's just not giving the slime a chance to form it is test time can you recognize slime and for you americans that are watching this i translated recognize for you in case you were confused by the s you're welcome we're going to take a look at me opening up the enclosure for our escalapian snake elnor i'm going to clean his enclosure and I'm checking out his water to see if it needs to be cleaned or not. What do you think? This is his water. Let me shut that door. Does this water look like it needs to be cleaned? Does the container look like it needs to be scrubbed? This is that same water so that you could get a closer look. What do you think about this? It looks pretty clean to me. Do you think that there's slime in it? Do you think I need to clean it? Do you think I need to scrub the bowl? 
well, I actually feel some slime in there. It felt slimy. And now I actually see some things floating in it. Those are not shadows, those are floaters in the water. And if you look very close at the bottom of this water container, now you can see the difference between where my fingers removed the slime and what the water surface looked like before I did that. So now that we've had a closer look, is it okay for your snakes to drink this water? Well, I have to ask myself, would I drink this water? If I was struggling to acquire resources during a zombie apocalypse and my very life depended on it, I would drink this water. However, as long as I can get water out of a faucet, out of a box, or out of a filter, I'm not drinking slime water and I don't expect my snakes to. Before I did that. So there's definitely slime in the water bowl and yes, I need to clean that. What are we gonna do about it then? Well, we're gonna wash it, we're gonna rinse, we're gonna repeat. We are going to rub our hand along the inside of that water container surface until it is literally squeaky clean and we can hear our fingers squeaking on it and we don't feel any more slime. <laughs> And we're just gonna do that with normal household cleaners and regular running water from the faucet. Okay, well, let's get to our summary, or I should say our slimery. Slime is communities of microorganisms that include bacteria, fungi, archaea, and protozoa, some of which are beneficial and some of which are bad. Know your slime from your eights feces, and other debris. Teach your snake to swim, or if you're unsuccessful at that, you can add, change, refresh, or slosh the water around daily with your hands. And then you can clean the water container about once a week or so. Here are those resources I mentioned. I only listed a few here, but if you go to any of these resources, it will take you to many, many other resources, especially if you go to resource number two by Ben Ari. That is the very comprehensive research paper on bioslime I found in Google Scholar and it links to others. And then there are many more recent papers than this also about biofilm in Google Scholar. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me to the end. Please remember to always be kind, love your animals, Make sure you keep their water clean and fresh for them. And until next time, you can email me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com if you have questions or visit my website at behavioreducation.org or consider becoming a patron where you can meet with me at least twice a month and sometimes extra times during the month and ask me questions through live Zoom video. You can find me on patreon.com slash behavioreducation. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, right here on YouTube. I asked you if you would drink that water and you said you would. If I had to drink the water because I needed to drink, yes, I would. But I, if I had an option to drink something better, I would drink cleaner water because there's slime in the bottle. Yeah, you say that now. Now that I know what you're recording. I yes, I would drink this water if I had to. I've drank worse water. When have you drank worse water than when that? When I was in the military, I drank some pretty bad water. And did it make you sick? No, I used iodine tablets. <laughs> so you treated the water before you drank it? If I had the ability to. You just didn't drink slime water? Nope.